to some of the quarterbacks speaking today. You just saw Baker Mayfield. We're going to start there in Tampa where Mayfield addressed the media. Yeah, I mean, obviously I want to play on time. You know, you have your plays designed, you practice it, you get them on time and uh, out there on the practice field. But uh, things happen in a game. And so your guys have to stay alive. The line's got to block forever that, and if they have to. And, uh, yeah, you just got to make it work somehow. It, it never goes perfectly as scripted on the practice plan to the game field. So it, it you have to find ways to make it work. What's been key to Baker Mayfield's turnaround with the Buccaneers, Marcus? One, boogie under the radar. No first overall expectations. Seems like he's playing free. Having Mike Evans and Chris Godwin doesn't hurt at all. And he seems to have an understanding about when to not only let the ball go, but when to use his legs as well. Yeah. But just leaning into playing football and nothing else. When you see Baker now, it looks like he's playing with some rhythm. He, it looks like he's playing freer. And I don't know if the situation, because Tampa didn't have many expectations coming into the season, and it was a great marriage between him. I don't know if he's he's uh, overcoming the pressure of where what is he as a quarterback and starting to ascend, but he's playing great but he's playing free, which mm. is the most important thing. Yeah, I, I think we've all always felt like Baker Mayfield just plays better when he's an underdog of sorts, and he certainly was one Absolutely. heading to Tampa Bay. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Chicago and Justin Fields. He's actually speaking to the media right now. We were able to pull some of his sound bites there from the press conference. Here's what he said about their mindset after the win last week, Dan. Not really a sense of relief um, because we knew that we could do it the whole time. So I think at this point, it's now just keeping it going um, and, you know, putting up the same amount of points and, uh, you know, being uh, efficient, you know, as we have been the past two weeks. So Somebody's alarm went off there. Yeah, it's like uh, made me feel like alarm I need to or wake a cell up. phone or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's impressed you from fields in recent weeks, Dan? The Bears are getting ready to play Minnesota. On well, he said efficient. I would say that you guys were efficient because you were explosive, mm. especially in situations to DJ Moore. So I want to see more of that. The conviction, the aggressiveness, and the ability to throw the ball downfield. Also, five quarterback runs last week. But most importantly, Justin was really good throwing the football away in situations when no one was open. That's one of the knocks on Justin that he could control control is holding on to it too long and then taking so many sacks the more he can say okay the defense won the rep I just got to get rid of this football no one's open the better it's going to be for their offense and that's one of the roles as a quarterback job wise is like hey man no one got open I'm going to get rid of the football and then coach call better play if they can do that if he does that again and they stay aggressive and convicted to DJ Moore downfield I honestly believe this offense can play consistently the way we saw last week. I mean, Dan, these numbers with Fields and DJ Moore are crazy. Fields has a 99.1 QBR when targeting DJ Moore. That's Throwing the, the ball. best by any QB receiver <laughs> duo this season. It just keeps going up. It Throwing was 98 ball. before. All right, let's go to Miami, where Tua Tungavailoa spoke about his historic start in South Florida. Listen to this. Oh, it would be nothing. Um, cool all or nothing? Yeah, sure. That, that, that'd definitely be cool. Um, if if we don't get to where we want to as a team, that'll, I mean, none of that would would mean anything to me. Um, but along the way, if we could get to where we want to get to as a team, and those statistics could follow um, in helping win games, I, I'd be very happy. Hawk, as good as two has been, you still want to see some areas of improvement. What are those? Yeah, absolutely. Marcus pointed this out to us, and he's absolutely right. Where Tua can get better is being poised in those situations where he gets past his first read or his second read to the same side of the field because he gets a little antsy. He starts to panic. Now, look, we are splitting hairs here because he's played incredible, but any football player will tell you we don't sit in the meeting room looking for opportunities to pat ourselves on the back. <laughs> we look for opportunities to get better. He can get better by being poised in the noise, trusting his elite processing ability, yeah. and know that if there's an answer to the test, he's going to find it. Yeah, look, and we're talking about this because we think they could be a playoff team. They, they probably should be. Now, you may be wondering, why was Tua Tungavailoa wearing Ohio State gear in the press conference? Let's explain this a little bit. So his brother Talia plays for Maryland. He's been having a great year. Unfortunately, though, so Maryland lost to Ohio State. It was a bit of a heartbreaker for them. So Tua lost a bet with Eli Apple and maybe somebody else on that Miami Dolphins squad. I actually love that, Hawk, when we get like the college bets going throughout the season. There's a lot of that that goes on in the NFL. Absolutely. I, I definitely participated in the college alma mater bets. I went to the max, so there wasn't as many <laughs> players that I played against, but you get it. Where'd we you go, Toledo? Play. You know it. Oh, yeah, don't start, Dan. Who'd you go get? Y'all get hammered Dan. by in the bowl game. Don't start, Dan. Uh, Dan. 2004, really, Dan? Yeah, what, too soon. 
Um, either way, Hawk never lost. And Lamar Jackson was good talk today on improving after the loss to the Steelers. Uh, I, I believe we we headed on the right. We headed to the right track. You know, um, each and every week we've been having explosive plays, but we haven't been consistent, and that's the biggest emphasis for us right now. And I believe, you know, Sunday in London, it'll be it'll be a lot of explosive plays, and hopefully we'll be consistent. We haven't had that before. You know, it was the first time it happened. It happened in a rival game, you know, where we didn't want it to happen. Um, but I, I, I believe our guys locked in right now, and they're they going to they gonna be better. So will I. Marcus, what went wrong for Lamar last week? Well, obviously, we showed the drops, Boogie. But even in the situation where you had all of those things transpire during the game, you had an opportunity to try to get in the end zone late in that game, and Lamar threw a red zone interception. And here's the thing. The, the loss is not blamed on Lamar. That's not what this is about. It's about in those particular situations, he can't be a part of the issue. And the issue in this particular one was the interception late in the game. Now, I didn't like the play Dan pointed out when it happened about the space and the time that was needed in order to execute this call. But ultimately, what Lamar Jackson has to do is what Lamar Jackson has been doing since he entered into this league overcome adversity and in this particular time he was a part of that adversity and he can't be going forward which I don't expect him to continue to be yeah it feels like the fumble late in the game with things like that just won't happen again for this Ravens team I'm optimistic Can, enough to just put that in the past